On the last webcast, we got to the point where we had SQL installed, we had Office Manager installed, and we had the secure key backed up. What we're just going to do right now, we're just going to stay in the DB Create wizard. Let's just go and create a Operations Manager Data Warehouse database. Um, just fill in the details where you want the files to go, and off it goes. And that's going to go and create a database for us. And when it finishes, we just get, you know, DB create successfully, life is good. Let's just have a look at our Ops Manager reporting component. So I don't need to install the data warehouse because the DB create wizard has just done that. So I just want to pick reporting server. Uh, what's my root management server called? We already saw back there, it was SCOM v next. So it's just going to go and verify that it can connect to the RMS. And once it can, it just says, okay, what is the um, reporting database we're going to use? Uh, next of all, it will say is what uh, SQL reporting services are we going to use? And we're using SCOM v next. I hit next. Then it's going to ask me, um, it needs two accounts. It needs a data write account and data read account. I just always create, you know, four service accounts, SRV underscore, so there's my SCOM write, there's my SCOM read. Um, I'm going to send operational data reports to Microsoft. Uh, and it's ready to install. And off we go. Once it's finished, we just get a screen to say it's done. And then an important thing is, is that for this to work, um, SQL reporting services has to respond to server name reports on the machine. Now because I'm using SQL 2008, uh, it uses its own reports driver and therefore with inside IIS, I don't need IIS on the box, but if I do and when I go to it you'll see that I don't have a reports and reports server uh, virtual directory inside IIS. If I just go back now to operations manager and close the console and reopen it, what we'll see is that it's going to load the reporting interface, it's going to open a reporting interface, and we'll be able to verify that the environment has installed correctly, and we can see that it has. The next step that we're going to do is, we're just going to lastly install the web console for Ops Manager, and once we have that done, we'll have uh, Operations Manager, our root management server, our reporting, and our web console installed and ready to go, and we should be good. And now let's just have a look at getting the website up and going. So, on this server, uh, web console, I just need to add a tick to say I want to install the web console. Uh, I want to use uh, Windows Authentication. I'm, I'm allowed to use Windows Authentication very easily because I'm installing the web console on the RMS and off it goes and it's ready to go. There are two things really that you need to get uh, the web console up and going. Um, ideally you need um, Microsoft Report Viewer 2008 and you have to have uh, Ajax extensions for .NET. The prereq checker will tell you them uh, before it allows you to continue. Once you have them up and going, it should install the binaries onto the web console. It happens pretty quickly, and as soon as it's done, web console is ready to go. And then when we go to the operator console, and we just go to admin and settings, you'll just be able to see the address for the web console. And there we are. The last thing we should see when this is done is the web console address will now appear under uh, web address and uh, under administration and if we go to uh, INET manager and we can see the Ops Manager site created we should be able to just open that browse Ops Manager web console appears and that's our install finished.